my 2010 project, I decided to learn how to knit. Um, the only thing with this project is that I have previously learned how to knit, so I was kind of using an easy escape route because I, uh, I wanted to do something that I kind of had general knowledge in, but, you know, with something that I haven't done in a while, so I thought I would try it out again. And before I do any more, just, I did not make this scarf, so <laughs> don't get your hopes up. Um, so yeah, so this is just a picture of her knitting. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, my main goal was to uh, make the scarf and hopefully, hopefully finish it by the end of the project or the end of the year. Um, so before I get more into my project, I kind of wanted to talk about the history of knitting. Um, it originally started what people believed to be like in the Middle East, and then it moved to Europe throughout the Mediterranean route, and um, it got to America kind of more recently um, through like European colonization and everything. Um, and they actually found the um, the earliest knitting pieces date back to between the 11th and 14th century. Um, and like I said, uh, compared to like spinning and weaving, knitting is actually a much more recent invention than previously believed. So there are many reasons for knitting. Um, one of them, which my mom told me she likes to knit to reduce her stress levels, which I think is you know, very important. Um, another way is to uh, show your creativity and artistic style through the use of like uh, pillows up there, or, or hats, beanies, scarves, uh, socks, anything you want to make. Um, and then another cool thing I thought was about people that knit or crochet as well is that um, there are many like ways to get together and knit with your friends, which is another relaxing process. Um, you can do that at home, at a store, a knitting store, or anywhere else. And um, there's actually a place in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, called Knitter's Edge. And uh, here you can buy patterns, buy needles, buy yarn. Um, you can take classes, learn how to knit, and they have a lounge area where you can just knit with your friends and relax and learn from experts. In my opinion, I think, uh, well, knitting kind of came to me easily. Um, I think it's, it, I mean, the simple knitting, it can kind of, anyone can learn it, any gender, age, anything. And something that, like, my mom really helped me understand knitting because she, she's been doing it for a couple years now, so she taught me the different styles of knitting, what yarn you could, should, you should use for certain projects, um, and even like you have to use certain needles for certain yarns. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, there was a couple terms I uh, always got confused with though, and one of them is purling, which is a style of knitting. And <laughs> I always thought, and like until a couple of days ago too, that it was spelled like pearl, like that you found in the ocean. So I was kind of <laughs> confused when I first saw that. Um, and all, it's just, it's really, in simplicity, it's just a, a reverse form of knitting that always confused me so much. And even now I tried it and I still get confused with it. So um, I also had a lot of difficulty with casting on, which is how you begin every knitting project. Um, and you just, you place the stitches uh, repeatedly onto the needle and that's how you begin. And Years ago, when I first learned how to knit, I could never do this, and my mom always started my projects for me, and I kind of hated that. So this time around, I my one goal was I'm going to learn how to cast on, so I can do a project without my mom's help and feel like an adult. So <laughs> I uh, I did actually accomplish that. Now I can cast on, so that felt good. But um, I never, I still haven't learned how to cast off um, because I have not finished a project, which goes into my next point which is that um, I can be a hyper easy person. <laughs> so I have a quote that says, uh, progress isn't made by early riser risers, it's made by lazy men trying to find easier ways to do something, which I can relate to <laughs> a lot. So with this project, laziness was definitely my hardest struggle. Um, when it comes to topics that I'm interested in, I definitely put a lot of effort into it, but when it comes to things that I'm not interested in, I tend to procrastinate a lot. So. I noticed that, especially with my, my blogging. <laughs> Did not do as much as I should have. So, um, so yeah, this is what my procrastination looked like because this project started early in the year and that's how far I've gotten. <laughs> so um, it was very difficult for me to just sit down and knit. And knitting is one of those things that you can watch TV while doing it, you can talk to people while doing it, and it just, it was very difficult for me to do that. I don't, I don't know why though. Um, needless to say, I may know how to knit, and it's 
seem, comes easy to me, but I, it's not something I enjoy. I like sitting around, watching Netflix, cuddling with my dogs, not doing anything. So knitting is something I just, I don't think I can get into, even if I do know how to do it. <clears throat> so I wanted to end with a quote from Yo-Yo Ma, which uh, says that, passion is one great force that unleashes creativity, because if you're passionate about something, then you're more willing to take risks. And I wanted to say this because although I did not finish my initial project, I did learn that there are certain parts of my life that I may know how to do certain things, but they're not my passions. And um, I respect those who do love knitting or have various passions of theirs, um, because passions are what are important to us and it's what is important to me. So I definitely respect that. And I know that knitting is it's fun for some people, but it's just, it wasn't for me, so. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time. Any questions for Emily? Thanks, Emily.